Hi, I'm Alistair Benn and this is Expressive Photography. Thanks for tuning in. This week I'm going to talk to you about composition and whether rules are useful, important, necessary or even worth spending any time with at all. So let's uh, get the cat in amongst the pigeons, shall we? to start with going right back to the beginning of my photographic journey which was back in 2004 this was my first landscapes anyway I'd been shooting birds for a couple of years already by this point I was on vacation in Canada uh, in Banff National Park and drove down to Calgary and bought a 14 to uh, a 17 to 40 a Canon 17 to 40 f4 lens and a choking or a cooking uh, video uh, sort of filter kits and some grads and basically decided that landscape photography seemed like it was worth a bit of a bash and these are literally the first photographs I took so this one here is you know a nice sunset and uh, sunset or an early evening in uh, Vermilion Lake at Banff National Park now this was before I'd read anything about composition you know so nothing so far it was just a beautiful cloud Mount Rundle autumn color and I pointed my camera at it innately so without any thought whatsoever forget about the color casts and stuff in this it's unprocessed this is another example where I wanted to get both bits of the cloud in the, the, the cloud and its reflection and you can see there that the horizon is centered Mount Rundle is actually slightly off center and again without any thought of composition at all this was what I chose to do and finally this shot from uh, Vancouver Island which was maybe about a week after I think I've said that this was my first landscape shot once before but it was probably about my third or fourth landscape shot um, and again it's one of these shots where I just saw something that caught my eye and pointed my camera at it and just allowed my own innate sense of the aesthetic I suppose without at the time I didn't think about it in terms of like that it was just I wanted to organize the frame in a way that was pleasing to me and the problem I did with things like this is that I, I started to learn I started to read books I started to go on forums I started to seek advice from my well people who I admired and quite often I was being told oh well that doesn't comply to the rule of thirds or you know you, you shouldn't have this or you can't do that and it seemed to me that I was making lots of mistakes I thought I was doing what pleased me but in actual fact I was making mistakes according to other people so I set about about a decade of fairly intensive study from about 2004 right through to maybe 2014-15 and I got to the point where I could make pretty photographs and I remember sitting in my studio once with a client um, and we were looking at my images and I could I saw that every single one of them had something in the bottom left and it would go up to the top right it was just this sweeping diagonal and it was just tediously repetitive and, and I really got to the point where I was just so disenfranchised with my own work uh, that I, I really thought about quitting landscape photography even though by this time it was my career now what I want to do is I want to come and look at a portfolio of images now this is my most recent work so this is stuff that's been done in the last two to three years and I'm putting together a new portfolio for my print website so alistairben.com if you want to watch a video talking about this you can click the join button below and I've made a video about portfolio development for the members of the channel so unfortunately we're having to <laughs> differentiate content now but uh, if you want to look more into portfolio development then think about joining the membership these images like I said these are my most contemporary images and I can absolutely assure you that when I took them no thought about where to place things on the frame occurred 
I literally saw something that caught my eye, pointed my camera at it and arranged it in the frame that in some way felt right to me. I'm not going to say always harmonious because some of the compositions aren't harmonious. Most of them are harmonious because I like harmony and order and I think that's a bit of a human condition. But where I'm at right now is I've had to unlearn all of these rules about, I talked about it last week in this foregrounds and backgrounds thing. An image doesn't need a foreground. This, uh, if we take it this example here, that image doesn't have a foreground. That image just is a, a distillation of my vision. It doesn't have a foreground, it doesn't have a midground, it doesn't have a background. Now it has depth and three dimensionality, but it's not about foregrounds, midgrounds and backgrounds. Now, obviously I appreciate that a lot of my work is kind of abstract, but if we to put the crop tool on this, the crop tool in Adobe Lightroom has these guidelines on it, which splits the world up into these rule of third segments. And as you can see, there is nothing in this image that in any shape or form adheres to the rule of thirds. I think we can probably say that for a fairly high degree of certainty, that most of my current photographs don't comply to the rule of thirds. And why, why is that? Well, partly it's, it's not a conscious kind of flip you for the PC uh, version of this channel. It's not a flip you to, to convention and it's not me just trying to be awkward and, and kind of rebellious because I don't consciously break the rules. There's three ways we can shoot. We can either look at the world in terms of templates and say, I need a foreground, a midground and a background and there needs to be some leading line or connectivity between them, either implied or explicit um, connectivity. So we can consciously adhere to the rules. And if we do that, we're going to make pretty photographs. There's no two ways about it that the concept of the rule of thirds has always been to try and create harmony. And the whole thing is that if you put something there and put something there, then there's a connectivity between them and they're in good places and you've got space and isolation and all of this. And it all makes perfect sense. But it's also blinkers. It, if Because if I was going to make photographs by the rule of thirds, I couldn't do things like this. So you can either make images based on a template and you can go out into the world looking for templates. You can either, the second option is you can either, you can then decide to break the rules. So, okay, well, I'm not going to put the horizon on the third line. I'm going to put it somewhere else, or I'm not going to put that rock on a third line. I'm going to put it somewhere else. And what you're doing there is you're consciously breaking the rules. And therefore you are, you're just, I think you're forcing yourself into another form of blinkering where you're doing something just because it doesn't comply to these arbitrary rules. The third choice, which is where I tend to lie, is you see something and you put it in the frame where it feels right. The beauty of this approach is that you're constantly pleasing yourself. Now, I'm not going to be narcissistic or self-centered enough to say that life should all be about pleasing ourselves, but when we're out in nature on our own with a camera, we don't have to please anybody else and we can focus on ourselves. And I think focusing on our own nurture is a pretty good thing to do. Now, when I took this photograph, I just put the things in the frame where I wanted them to be. And almost every other photograph in this collection and if I just grab the, the thing there. Now, coincidentally, we have a bright sand dune and a nice bit of contrast lying directly on one of these intersection points. So some purists would say, ah, well, that works because the, 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 the interest is in that place. Now, what came first, the art or the rules? what came first, the creativity or a, an analysis of the creativity. It was obviously people were creative first and then this, this desire to intellectualize everything kicked in. 
and we had to have experts telling us why things worked and that this was the pure aesthetics and this was the only way to do things. Now, I can hear people screaming in my ear in the comments section already saying, well, the rules help you get somewhere quicker. They help you to understand what good photography can be all about. And my argument is that all you're doing with that is that you're saying, well, if you want to be the same as everybody else, go right ahead. Because if you take 20 students and 19 of them are told this is a good way to make photographs and the other person was sick that day and we all go out into the landscape, it's the one person who was sick that day is going to go out and see the world in a completely different way from the other 19. I honestly believe that by learning rules, we actually create a barrier to our innate creativity. Because all they're doing is, is they're fast tracking you to become the same as everybody else. And I'm prepared to get into discussions with this with anybody. I've spoken to university lecturers in fine art about this. And of course, they, they tend to believe that the rules are useful and they're, they're good for beginners and they create a foundation and we should learn all this stuff. Um, I've yet to be convinced. If I continue to look at my portfolio, um, you know, this is another example. The, there's nothing about this that complies to any rule. But to me, it's just perfectly harmonious. So in this video this week, it's just going to start off with the question, do you feel that the rules are helping you? Do you feel that by having a classical training that you are somehow better suited to go out into the landscape than someone who's just been given a camera and, and told, go out and engage with the world and photograph things that you love? There will be a development of this in terms of how do we make photographs to articulate things to other people and are there methods of ways to, to look at this so that you know not everything we do is just completely random and wacky that we can be persuasive um, but at the end of the day uh, I'm going to start this series of videos by basically saying that I don't think that learning the rules is in any shape or form advantageous um, I have had to unlearn most of it and I can absolutely categorically guarantee that right now I don't think about it at all. I don't go out into the landscape consciously adhering to or breaking rules. I just point my camera at things that catch my eye, that I love. And should they, on future reflection, somehow comply to the rule of thirds, that's arbitrary because it wasn't conscious and it wasn't anything that was driving my creativity. I know this is might gonna be a little bit shorter this week. I'm really trying to look after my voice, but I know that this is a contentious subject. It's something that's going to divide people. Um, but I can, uh, I'd like to think that some of my arguments here may be of value to you. And if you want to develop your own photography to go out into the landscape and develop yourself creatively, then I, if you think about it, being told what to do by somebody else, how can you be creative? I can pick up a guitar over there and play a series of notes that somebody else has told me is great. And if, if I don't like it, then I don't like it. It's as simple as that. So yeah, forget about them, do your own thing. And uh, hopefully that's gonna be of some value to you. Check out the, the link below. And as always, if you want to dig deep into my psychology about visual design and all of these concepts, maybe check out the ebooks and the videos um, because that's really helping to spread this word of how we look at the world and to be creative. Thanks for watching as always, uh, and we will be back next week. Cheers now. Bye. <laughs>